All right, you are welcome again. Today, I want us to discuss a very important topic. I want us to see how to solve at length using table with the aid of calculator. How we can solve at length using a table with the help of scientific calculator. You get it right? And uh, we are going to see most of the confusing parts in this Ackland when using table okay i know you have some unanswered questions in your mind i believe that after this lesson most of those questions are going to be answered okay now how we can solve Ackland using table and in the process i'm going to use calculator to help us to do it faster okay you know we know that we can use calculator to impute integration okay directly we are not going to use calculator to solve directly but it's going to help us in this table okay now let's go let's take a look at these two questions we're going to consider in this lesson number one says a cable is hanging between two poles of equal height that are 20 feet apart suppose that the cable take this shape of a catenaries y is equal to 5 open bracket exponential x all over 10 plus exponential minus x all over 10 from the interval x less than or equal to minus 10 but greater than or equal to 10 how long is the cable you get it now number two says Find the area length of the curve. Y is equal to 1 all over 3. Open bracket x squared plus 2. Close bracket raised to power 3 all over 2. Between x equal to 6 to x equal to 8. Okay. These are questions from exercises. Let's see how we can use table to solve this and then see what we are going to get. Number one, we have y is equal to 5, open bracket, exponential, x all over 10 plus, exponential minus x all over 10. You get it? Yes, now we can use this 5 to open the bracket. We're going to have 5 times exponential, it's going to give us 5 exponential raised to power x all over 10 plus, 5 exponential raised to power minus x all over 10. You get it right yes and we know that the length of an arc is given as the integral from a to b square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx okay yes and then you see that this y is given as our f of x so we said our f of x is equal to 5 exponential raised to power x all over 10 plus 5 exponential raised to power minus x all over 10 this is our f of x but what we have in this formula is f prime of x squared so the first step we're going to take the f prime of x so the f prime of x we're going to have 5 times 1 all over 10 exponential raised to power x all over 10 plus 5 times minus 1 all over 10 exponential raised to power minus x all over 10 okay Yes, this is the differentiation, all right? So when we say 5 times 1 all over 10, it's going to give us 5 all over 10. And 5 all over 10 is the same as 1 all over 2, okay? Yes. So here we have 1 all over 2 exponential raised to power x all over 10 minus 1 all over 2 exponential raised to power minus x all over 10, okay? Here, let us factor out 1 all over 2. So when we factor out 1 all over 2, we are going to have that f prime of x is equal to 1 all over 2 open bracket exponential raised to power x all over 10 minus exponential raised to power minus x all over 10. Okay? Yes. So we have gotten f prime of x. Let's go further and find f prime of x squared. So when we say f prime of x squared, 
you are going to see 1 all over 2 open bracket exponential raised to power x all over 10 minus exponential raised to power minus x all over 10 all in bracket squared okay so let's distribute this squared to the content when we distribute this to 1 all over 2 it's going to give us 1 all over 4 and when we distribute it to the content exponential we're going to have exponential raised to power 2x all over 10 minus exponential raised to power minus 2x all over 10 yes in the exponential the power here we have 2x all over 10 so when you say 2x all over 10 is the same as saying 1 all over 5 okay so here we're going to have 1 all over 4 open bracket exponential raised to power x all over 5 minus exponential raised to power minus x all over 5 okay yes so here we have seen that f prime of x squared is equal to 1 all over 4 open bracket exponential raised to power x all over 5 minus exponential raised to power minus x all over 5 okay so you still remember that our formula for arc length is given as integral from a to b square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx so we have gotten our f prime of x squared so let's fix it in we're going to say that the arc length is going to give us the integral from minus 10 to 10 which is the interval a and b the square root of 1 plus in place of f prime of x squared we have 1 all over 4 open bracket exponential raised to power x all over 5 minus exponential raised to power minus x all over 5 close bracket dx so when we compute this in a calculator when you use a scientific calculator to solve this it's going to give us 20 directly it's going to give us 20 directly okay so we can simply say approximately 20. so we want to solve this using a table we don't want to use calculator to solve this direct and besides it's not all calculator that can solve this yes you can check your scientific calculator if it can solve this so it is not all scientific calculator that can solve this directly so if you have a question like this or you come to a level where you can't solve this manually you cannot integrate this and maybe probably your calculator cannot also solve this now we can split it into table form we can use table to solve this okay now you know when we want to use table we are going to use this relation we are going to say that h all over 2 open bracket f of a plus f of b plus 2 open bracket summation ring is going to give us the arc length is that clear it's going to give us the arc length now let's go what do we say that h is h is the same as a a plus b all over n a plus b all over what n or you say b minus a all over n now why do we say b minus a all over n in some cases uh, like this one we have we have minus 10 and 10 if you say a plus b all over n that means we're going to have minus 10 plus 10 so when you say minus 10 plus 10 is equal to what zero so that is the reason why we can use the second one that say b minus a so when you say b minus a you are going to have 10 minus minus you get this right so when you say 10 minus minus is going to give us plus so 10 plus 10 is going to give us 20 all over the interval given to you so this n you can choose any number this n you can choose any number but i advise that you choose a number that will involve the first and the last that is the number that will help you to involve the a and b it is not interval that will involve a and b and any interval that you choose any n that you choose and it did not involve a and b it will not give you the correct answer you get it right now when we look at question number two i will explain more on this n okay but for now we can choose n in this particular question to be 10 and we can also choose n to be 20 any of them it will give you the same answer okay now let's go 
Now, if we choose n to be what? To be 10. If you use n to be 10, that means that h is going to give us 10 minus minus 10 all over 10. n is equal to 10, right? So here, I'm going to have 20 all over 10 equal to 2. Is that true? 20 all over 10 equal to 2. So that is to say that you are going to start counting. You know, this n or this h is just like the scale or the interval. The scale. The scale of the number, okay? Now, that is to say you have 2 as your h. That is, you are going to start from a to b. And then you'll be counting in the space of 2, 2. So here we have chosen n to be 10. That means we are going to have from the interval minus 10 to 10. We are going to start with uh, minus 10. When you say plus 2, you're going to give us what? Minus 8. When you say plus 2 again, you're going to give us minus 6. Plus 2 again, which is your h. You're going to give us minus 4. Plus 2, minus 2, plus 2, 0, plus 2, 2, plus 2, 4. So this H gives us the scale. You get it right? Good. Now let's go. We want to solve this with the help of calculator. Okay. Now this is my scientific calculator. I want you to locate mode. Press mode. From mode. You see many options, right? I want you to press on the option for table. You can be a number, right? Uh -huh. Just select the number that stands for table. So when you select the table, what will appear on your screen is f of x is equal to. Now, here, look at what we have here. The integration that we cannot solve is square root of 1 plus 1 all over 4, open bracket, exponential raised to power x all over 5 minus exponential raised to power minus x all over 5, okay? So this uh integration is going to be this problem is going to be our f of x that is going to be our f of x so in place of this f of x type this square root now type this problem we're going to have square root of one plus one all over four open bracket exponential raised to power x all over five minus exponential raised to power minus five all over x okay so after typing it now you say equal to from equal to, you say, where are you starting from? What are your interval? Starting point is your A. So our starting point is minus 10. Then you say, okay. Or you say, equal to. Where are you intending to end? Which is talking about your B. So our B here is 10. Then we'll type 10. Okay. You say, equal to. Now here, look at what it says here. It says, step. What is he talking about step? Step is talking about your h. After when you calculated your h, what do you have? You have 2. So when we choose our n to be 10, our h is going to give us 2. So our step is going to be 2, right? So you say 2 equal to. Now you wait. Let it calculate it for you. So after calculating, you see that it has calculated it for you. You have in this place of minus 10. This is what you are going to have in the place of minus 8. This is the value you are going to have in the place of minus 6. When x is minus 6, this is what you are going to have. When x is all these values, this is what you are going to have. And if we are to use calculator to compute this and replace x with a value here, it's going to give you the same thing. But using calculator like this, it will be easier. Okay. So when you choose your n to be 10, this is what you are going to have. And if you go again and choose your n to be 20. Now, let's go again and do it. Let's go. So, after computing your table, you say equal to. Your starting point is minus 10. Your end point is what? Is 10. Your step now is going to give you 1. That is when n is equal to 20. So that means you are going to have 20 all over 20 is equal to 1. So h is equal to 1. So and that h is your step. So when you put 1 here, you say equal to, you wait. So this is the table when n is equal to 20. You can see this. And this is the table when n is equal to 10. 
all right yes these are the two tables when n is equal to 20 and when n is equal to 10. now let's go can we solve this let's solve two of them when n is equal to 20 and when n is equal to 10. let us see what we are going to have all right now let's solve this when n is equal to 10 what are we going to have and when n is equal to 20 what are we going to have okay good so here now we have seen our table right good so when n is equal to 10 that means going to have h is equal to 10 minus minus 10 all over 10 equal to 20 all over 10 and 20 all over 10 is equal to 2 so our h is equal to 2 and then our formula we have h all over 2 open bracket f of a plus f of b plus 2 summation rim okay good now we have in place of h we can replace it with 2 right so we have 2 all over 2 open bracket f of a that is in these are square root of 1 plus f prime of x whatsoever so in place of a now what do we have the first value we have 0 0.9019 that's our first value right plus the f of b the second value we have one point the last value we have 1.6773 plus we have two summation of the ring so after the first and the last which other values are in between? They are called the remainders, okay? So after the first and the last, the rest of the numbers are the remainders. So the summation of those remainders in this table when n is equal to 10. So the summation, we have 8.6693. So the summation of the remainders will give us 8.6693. So here, we say... 0 0.9019 plus 1.6773 when we add this together it's going to give us 2.5792 plus when we say 2 times 8.6693 it's going to give us 17.3386 okay then we add this together 2.5793 plus 17.3386 it's going to give us 19.9178 which is approximately what 20 the same thing we have when we use calculator to compute this directly is that true yes now let's go when n is equal to 20 let's see what we are going to have also so when n is equal to 20 h is going to give us 10 minus minus 10 all over 20 equal to 20 all over 20 and 20 all over 20 is equal to 1 so here h is equal to 1 so in our formula we have h all over 2 open bracket f of a plus f of b plus 2 open bracket summation ring so here we have our h to be 1 so we're going to have 1 all over 2 open bracket uh, f of a is 0 0.9019 plus f of b is 1.6773 plus 2 open bracket summation of ring in this table when n is equal to 20 you know we have large values right so when we add the rem so after the first and the last the rest of the numbers when we add them together we're going to have 18.4166 18.4166 so when we say 18.4166 multiplied by 2 is going to give us 36.8332 okay yes and when we say 0 0.9019 plus 1.6773 is going to give us 2.5792 okay so we still have one all over two open bracket 2.5792 plus 36.8332 okay so when we add this in the bracket we're going to have 39.4124 okay so here we have one all over two times 39 point 4124 so when we multiply this we are going to have 19.7062 approximately 20 so when we use table we see that we are getting almost or similar answers okay yes so we have seen how to use calculator to solve this now let's take a look at problem number two 
Problem number two is say that we have y is equal to 1 all over 3, open bracket, x squared plus 2, close bracket, raised to power 3 all over 2. The interval given to us is 6 to 8. Okay? Yes. Now, let's go. How can we solve this? You know, this is given as y. And we need f prime of x. That is the differentiation function. Okay? So, how can we differentiate this? You know, this is f of x, right? We need f prime of x. Now, let's go. We can say let t equal to x squared plus 2. So, in this bracket, we can call the content in the bracket x squared plus 2 a letter t. So, as we call it a letter t, let's differentiate t with respect to x. So, we're going to have the t all over the x. So, when we differentiate, it's going to give us 2x. So, in this place, we have y is equal to 1 all over 3 x squared plus 2 raised to power 3 all over 2 so and we have replaced x squared plus 2 with a letter t so that means the new function is going to be y is equal to 1 all over 3 t raised to power 3 all over 2 is that true yes so here now we have y and the variable t so we're going to differentiate y with respect to t that means we're going to have the y all over the t is going to give us 1 all over 3 times 3 all over 2 t raised to power 3 all over 2 minus 1 okay so when you say 1 all over 3 times 3 all over 2 it's going to give us 1 all over 2 and then when you say 3 all over 2 that is the exponent minus 1 it's going to give us 1 all over 2 okay so we say that dy all over dx is going to give us dy all over dt times dt all over dx and we have dy all over dt to be 1 all over 2t raised to power 1 all over 2 times our dt all over the x is 2x okay good let's replace the value for t so that means we're going to have the all over the x is equal to 1 all over 2 in place of t we have x squared plus 2 close bracket raised to power 1 all over 2 times 2 okay so we say 1 all over 2 times 2x is going to give us x okay so here we have the all over the x is equal to x open bracket x squared plus 2 close bracket raised to power 1 all over 2 so we see that this is our f prime of x we see f prime of x is equal to x open bracket x squared plus 2 close bracket raised to power 1 all over 2 is that true yes but we are interested in f prime of x squared so that means we are going to square this expression so that means we're going to have x upper bracket x squared plus 2 raised to power 1 over 2 all in bracket squared okay that will give us f prime of x squared so let's distribute this squared to the content in the bracket so x is going to have x squared and then x squared plus 2 in bracket raised to power 1 over 2 so the 2 we meet the exponent 1 over 2 is going to give us 2 over 2 which is equal to 1 so therefore f prime of x squared is going to give us x squared open bracket x squared plus 2 so let's use x squared to open this bracket so we're going to have x squared times x squared is going to give us x raised to power 4 and x squared times 2 is going to give us 2x squared so here we see that we have f prime of x squared is equal to x raised to power 4 plus 2x squared. Okay, good. Now, the formula that we have, so that the arc length is going to give us integral from a to b, square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. We have solved f prime of x squared. Okay, now let's fix it. We're going to have the integral from 6 to 8 square root of 1 plus x raised to power 4 plus 2x squared dx you get it right so when you use your calculator and then punch this integral from 6 to 8 square root of 1 plus x raised to power 4 plus 2x squared dx is going to give you 100.6667 approximately 100.6667 seven all right yes let's use table to solve this for us to use table we are going to use these relations we are going to say h all over two open bracket f of a plus f of b plus two open bracket summation of rim okay and then here we say that h 
is equal to a plus b all over n or b minus a all over n okay good now let's go so what is going to be our n so what is going to be our n so if we choose n to be 10 that means we are going to have our h to be 6 plus 8 all over 10 which is going to give us 14 all over 10 which is going to give us 1.4 now let's count from 6 to 8 what are we going to have after when you count 6 the next one is going to give us 7.4 you know when you say 14 divided by 10 it's going to give us 1.4 so that means the interval between this boundary is going to give us 1.4 so after when you've gotten 6 so the next one i'm going to add 1.4 so 1.4 is going to give us 7.4 you stopped there so this did, did not include the a and b so the interval 10 cannot work so let's say what of 20 so when you say n equal to 20 that is going to have 14 all over 20 and 14 all over 20 is equal to 0 0.7 so if we want to use 0 0.7 that means the first one is going to have 6. The next one is going to give us 6.7. The next one is going to give us 7.4. That's where it stops. So it did not include the A and the B. You get it right? Okay, what interval are we going to use? We simply choose N that will give us room for A and B. The interval N that will give us room for a and b so what if we choose n to be 50 n to be what 50 so when we choose n to be 50 then we're going to have 14 all over 50 and 14 all over 50 is 0 0.25 so 0 0.25 is going to be the scale the interval okay so here we're going to have 6.00 plus 0 0.25 it's going to give us 6.25 plus 0 0.25 it's going to give us 6.5 plus 0 0.25 is going to give us 6.75 plus 0 0.25 is going to give us 7.00 plus 0 0.25 is going to give us 7.25 add it again 7.5 add it again 7.75 add it again 8 you see that we have a and we have b so 50 is one of the perfect n to use okay good as we choose n to be 50 right and we have that h is equal to 0 0.25 let us use calculator to find this table without wasting much time this is my calculator right i want you to press mode from mode press table from table here we have f of x right yeah type square root of 1 plus x raised to power 4 plus 2x raised to power 2 then you say equal to from equal to ask you starting point our starting point is a a is 6 then equal to the end is what the b and the b is what 8 then equal to there is a step our step is h h is 0 0.25 then you say 0 0.25 then equal to you wait for it to calculate it so here is what we have so we say that in place when x is equal to 6 so here we say when x is equal to 6 we are going to have 37 if you want to check whether this table or what this calculator give us is correct you can point in your calculator square root of 1 plus x raised to power 4 plus 2x squared and then in place of x replace it with 6 then you see what you are going to have okay so here we have the table we have 37 40 43 46 50 53 57 61 65 all right yes so here we have the column for first and the last and we have a column for remainder okay so yeah let's go so the formula we are going to have h all over 2 open bracket f of a plus f of b plus 2 open bracket summation of ring so here we have our h to be 0 0.25 so we have 0 0.25 all over 2 open bracket 
our f of a is 37 plus our f of b is 65 plus we have two summation of rim is going to give us 351.75 so the summation of rim is going to give us 351.75 okay good so when we say 37 plus 65 is going to give us 102 plus when we say 2 times 351.75 is going to give us 703.5 okay so here we have 0 0.25 all over 2 open bracket 102 plus 703.5 so when we say 102 plus 703.5 is going to give us 805.5 and when we say 0 0.25 divided by 2 it's going to give us 0 0.125 then here we have 0 0.125 multiplied by 805.5 is going to give us 100.6875 hello it's going to give us 100.6875 you remember when we use calculator calculator directly it gave us 100.667 and we use table and it gave us 100.6875 approximately they are the same okay yes now we have seen how to use table to solve arc length with the help of calculator please i want you to watch this all over again share our video like and subscribe if you have not done so and stay blessed.